<laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den. With me, your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. Continuing on with the spell guide for the Occultist, we are now up to enchantment spells. And, as a quick reminder, or uh, just a... Uh, a little bit of information for you if you haven't seen the rest of the spell guide and the uh, occultist guide overall for pathfinder and that's first edition pathfinder when you're casting spells as an occultist you need to have the appropriate implement at hand so each of the different uh, school for schools of magic so your divination enchantment necromancy evocation all of those different schools as an occultist, you have different implements for those, so you need the appropriate implement to be able to cast these spells and cast them at their full strength, at your full strength, as well as access all the different implement powers and use the different focus uh, uh, focus points that you have invested in them. You need to have all that on hand and ready to go. So make sure you keep very close eye and good track of your implements. They're absolutely critical for you to be effective but with all that said and out of the way now we're gonna go ahead and start covering these spells and enchantments pretty good for the most part except for at zero level the only option that you really get here is days and it's not great it's casting time is a standard action range is a nice close 25 feet plus 5 feet every two levels and you target one humanoid creature with four hit dice or less and here comes the problem uh, will saves negate. You cloud the mind of a humanoid creature with four hit dice or less and leave them dazed. They're unable to take uh, actions, but they don't have any penalties either. They're able to defend themselves, so you're not opening them up to uh, attacks of opportunity or coup de grace or anything like that. Creatures with five hit dice or more, however, are unaffected by the spell. And after a creature has been dazed by the spell, they are immune to further castings for up to one minute. So it's not like they have a whole 24 hours of being immune to this spell, but even still, a minute is going to be longer than most combat encounters are. So you're going to be very limited in how effective this spell is going to be and even then by the time you're level three four you're gonna be running out of targets that this is viable on so this is not going to be a spell that lasts long for you if you're using it at all it's nice in a pinch if you're got a three hit dice spell caster not the most dangerous target in the world but certainly handy for them to not be uh uh active at taking actions and casting spells back at you guys but this will quickly be replaced by many other much better spells but then at first level we get a pretty solid choice here a, a very good option and that's charm person the casting time for this particular spell is one standard action and it's another nice close range at 25 feet plus 5 feet every two levels and you target one humanoid creature the duration is one hour a level, so pretty damn generous overall. Will saves do negate, however. You convince a target that you are a trusted friend and ally. You don't control them, but they take everything you say and do in the most favorable way possible, because, well, you're their friend. You're a longtime friend of theirs. They've known you forever. But if your allies are threatening the target, they get a plus five bonus on this will save. If you, th if you are threatening the target in any way or damage them, the spell effect ends immediately as they shake off the enchantment and they realize <laughs> you're, you're a threat and are probably fairly pissed with you in, in the process of all of this. The big limiting factor on this is you are stuck with humanoid creatures. There's not a big range of targets that you can uh, use this on. Uh, at least uh, types of targets. You can't go with monstrous humanoids. You can't go with uh, giants, draconic creatures, anything like that. But humanoids still gives you a pretty robust range. This is elves, dwarves, the various uh, kinds of gnomes and drow and all of these different other humanoid creatures. Other humans, for example. So you can still get a good deal of use out of this. And given that it's a first level spell, this is still going to this is useful early on and this can still be useful later on as well as humanoids tend to be a pretty common enemy type is at higher levels though 
your opponents may be resisting this pretty well so you're going to want more advanced versions of this later on if you're wanting to focus on this kind of a thing at level two though we get calm emotions and this one's a really really good one better than i'd realized uh, in these last several decades that i've been gaming the casting time is a standard action range is 100 feet plus 10 feet per level uh, the target is a 20 foot radius spread and the duration is, goes for as long as you concentrate up to one round per level so if you're level 10 you can get up to 10 rounds out of this will saves negate you stop the rages of combat and the revelry of, of many parties. Aggressive actions and dealing damage, though, will end the spell. You can use this to suppress barbarian rage, uh, bardic inspiration, confusion, and other uh, kinds of enchantment effects like this. Uh, any kinds of mind-affecting abilities that stir up and char wildly charge a target's emotions so this is really really great i mean especially given that we're going to be in close combat if you're going up toe to toe against a barbarian the barbarian's got a better attack bonus typically is going to have a higher strength a really good constitution it's going to be using a big two-handed weapon to just really maximize that strength and their rage advantage so hitting them with this will drop their rage and the bonuses that they get out of that and leave them a little bit more vulnerable to you so definitely a good spell to have but then third level is another great one it's hold person i really really like this one probably more than some other guides do and i think with good reason the casting time is a standard action and it's another good range at 100 feet plus 10 feet per character level the target is one humanoid creature and the duration is one round per level will saves negates now what this will do is this will paralyze a target and freeze them in place they're still able to breathe and blink but they cannot move they're still as a statue now the nice thing is is that when you use this swimming creatures they will begin to sink because they can't move flying targets are no longer flapping their wings or whatever it is they're using to propel themselves upwards and defy gravity they will begin to fall they get new saves on each su subsequent round but you can fall pretty far pretty fast and i can only imagine the struggles that a a uh, submerged character will have trying to break the surface again particularly if they're in armor so definitely a very useful spell especially if you get them held in the right position and some one of your allies with a high strength score just comes over and just bull rushes them off an edge doesn't matter if they're gonna succeed on their will saves the next round or two that drop is going to deal a significant amount of damage if not kill them so definitely a good spell to add to your repertoire and then for fourth level you get confusion it's a classic spell definitely handy and adds quite a bit of chaos to the battlefield casting time is a standard action and the range is another 100 feet plus 10 feet per level and the target is all creatures within a 15 foot radius burst and the duration is one round per level with will save negating you confuse the targets and cause them to lose control and you roll a d100 1 through 25 the target will act normal 26 through 50 the target will begin babbling incoherently and incomprehensibly 51 through 75 the target deals 1d8 plus their strength uh, bonus to themselves in damage 76 through 100 the target will attack the nearest creature including allies so this is a really good one to have it's all creatures in a 15 foot radius burst so you can get a good number of creatures there and even if some of them make their saves you have good odds of at least one or two of them failing and one or two of them failing and taking any of these random actions possibly attacking their allies well that's just a win on top of win on top of win for you as you disrupt the action economy the the your opponents lose all cohesion and strategy whatever formation or maneuvers they might be pulling everything begins to fall apart it's even better when you have a nice a group of five or so enemies that all fail their will saves i've seen that happen once and it was glorious to watch happen but for fifth level we have mind fog and this is one that i covered with the witch but it bears uh repeating here and being put on this list because it is just that damn good 
Casting time is a standard action, and the range is another generous 100 feet plus 10 feet per level, and the target is a 20 foot radius spread that goes 20 feet high. The duration is 30 minutes and an extra 2d6 rounds, and we'll cover why in a moment. Will saves negate for this. You produce an immobile fog bank that inflicts a minus 10 penalty on wisdom scores and on will saves while they while targets are in it, and then it lasts for another 2d6 rounds after they leave it. That is, if they fail their initial save anyways. So this is a pretty damn big penalty. Is it's a minus 10 on the will save, so it's a minus 10 right there. And then a minus 10 to wisdom means that they are losing another five points of their wisdom bonus, possibly dropping them down further. So potentially your opponents will be only getting a plus one bonus, plus two bonus on their will saves, depending on how high or low their wills, uh, their uh, wisdom score may be and how good their will save score is. This is great to have. It's a it's uh, the fact that it's a radius is a big it affects a nice big area is great but the good thing about this is it's a good setup spell it's a good spell to use in tandem with other spell casters in your party so you want um you want your opponents to be failing those their will saves for confusion throw out mind fog have somebody else throw it down you want them to be vulnerable to your witch friends hexes throw this down this will absolutely help with that this is great to have you would certainly be remiss to not have this on your spell list but uh, to close out at your sixth level spell you get charm monster mass and this is the upgraded version of charm person from first level uh, the casting time is a standard action range is that nice close 25 feet plus five feet for every two levels and the target is one creature Notice it's one creature, not just humanoid. So this opens up into a fairly broad area and range of categories of monsters that you can hit with this. So this will include your giants, your different trolls, uh, all kinds of myriad creatures that you want charmed. And it lasts an incredible one day per level. The will save negates and it works as charm monster, which works like charm person, except you are not restricted by the monster's size or their type. You're only limited by either just using this on one creature or no more hit dice than twice your level in creatures. So say you're level 20 and you have a possibility of affecting eight creatures with this. Well, you have to count out what their hit dice total is. Your maximum is 40 hit dice. So if you, if four of those creatures have 10 hit dice, you can get those four creatures because that comes up to a total of 40 at 10, 20, 30, and 40 hit dice for all four of those creatures. Or if they're all, if all eight of them only have four hit dice apiece, all of them can be charmed by this spell. They do get their will saves on it, but well, if it's a bunch of uh, level four creatures, you stand pretty good odds of getting most of them, if not all of them. So definitely a worthwhile spell to have, especially since it's a mass that uh, uh, that can affect a wide range of creatures. Now it says one creature on here, but you can affect multiple as long as they're in the same general area, about uh, 20 foot radius or so. But these are not the only spells on the occultist spell list. There are certainly more in the enchantment category, but I believe these are going to be the most bang for your buck out of this list here if you want to go with enchantment. Personally, I like uh, I like divination a little bit better for overall, but you know, depending on the situation at hand, it's nice to have this broad range of utility at your fingertips should you want it. Uh, but if you disagree, then go on down to the comments. Let me know what other spells might you swap out for these ones that I've listed here. Or if you like the spell list overall, please let me know about that as well. Hit the like button or dislike button as you will. And if you're looking for more, well, good news for you, you lucky so-and-sos. There's going to be two more videos popping up over here. The first, Google has decided that you will enjoy. The other is another video that I've done fairly recently here. 
Or, if this hasn't been your first stop here at the Gamer's Den, well, you must be enjoying something, so go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here. Certainly, we'd all be happy to have you join in. But, with that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.